What's good, everybody? In my video today, we're talking about properties of real numbers, and I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm not just going to give you the definitions. We're going to go through some practice problems and explain why we get the answers that we do. So when we look at this first example, what we have to pay attention to is what's in parentheses. And if we've noticed is that the only thing that has changed, the numbers inside the parentheses are the same, right? But the order changes. And when order changes, guys, we should know that we are talking about the commutative property of addition or multiplication because the same rule is gonna apply. And before we go on further, what I want you guys to understand is that when we're talking about properties of real numbers, it only applies to properties of addition and properties of multiplication. You will not see properties for subtraction or division, okay? So when working with these properties, please remember that. So as we were saying, in the commutative property, right, whether it's addition or multiplication, right? Even if we change the order that we multiply, the answer is still going to be the same. So what you see me guys doing is I'm filling in the multiplication part. And when we look on both sides, right? And we multiply, we'll get three times nine, which will give us 27. And then on the other side, we're going to get the same exact thing. So even though we changed the order, right, we flipped one and three around, we're still going to get the same answer. And like I said, this applies to the commutative property of addition or multiplication. And if we did this problem for the addition part, would, they would be the same answer. Now, we're going to go on to our next problem in blue, and we're going to try to figure out what property is this. We're, we're identifying this property, and I notice that it has parentheses. So let's just put a box around these parentheses, right? And as I'm putting a box around the parentheses, the first thing that I notice is that what is inside the parentheses is not the same. So that should be an indicator to me. Okay. So I know that when the groupings change or what's inside parentheses, brackets, braces, once those change, I know that nine times out of 10, right, we are going to be talking about the associative property of addition or multiplication. And with this property, what it's saying is that, hey, what is inside of the parentheses can and will change. And even if it does, our answer will stay the same. So let's go through an add and let's see if this is the case. So when I go through an add, I'm going to get five plus eight is equal to 12 plus one. And once we add both of these sums, right, once we add this up, we're going to get 13 is equal to 13. So as we can see, the way that we grouped the numbers, our factors, it did not change our answer. And that's what you guys need to know about the associative property of addition and multiplication. I didn't draw the multiplication, guys, but if we draw the same exact problem, or write it out, I should say, and we go through and solve, we're going to get the same exact answer on both sides. All right, so we talk about commutative property, associative property, right? We know the differences between the two. Let's go on to our third property. So my third property, it says 5x, and it looks like, hold on, I think I made a little error with this. Let's change it real quick. So it says in parentheses, 5x plus 2 times 0 is equal to 0. So guys, understand we're talking about a property that has to deal with multiplication. So anytime we're dealing with a property and we multiply anything by zero, the product will be zero. So just understand, guys, this is the zero. And let's switch to white. This is the zero product property. And understand that there is no addition property for this. It's only 
zero product property. And if we're multiplying anything by zero, our answer is always going to be zero. That's all it's saying. Just keep it simple as that. So if you see something where there's multiplication and it equals to zero, your first assumption should be zero product property. However, we're going to go on to our next property and I'm going to show you a little trick that they try to confuse you guys with when it comes to the zero product property. So with this step right here, guys, everyone thinks, or problem I should say, everyone thinks that it's zero product property because the equation is equal to zero. And I understand. I would probably think that too. However, let's pay attention to the operation. So remember I told you zero product property only deals with what? Multiplication. So when we see something like this, we have to understand that we are talking about the inverse property, okay? And the inverse property of addition, inverse property of multiplication, it's saying that anything, or we're, we're basically saying that we use opposites to cancel out. So if you're thinking about inverse property of addition, right? If we're, we're if we have addition and we're canceling it out, we're going to use subtraction, right? Or the negative, positive, negative. We use opposites to cancel out. So that means our answer should be zero, right? Because we use opposites to cancel out. So if you look at this problem, positive 10 plus negative 10, right? Plus the opposite value cancels out. So now let's go over to multiplication. Let's see, how does this property apply to multiplication? And I'm going to show you guys how. So they're going to give you a problem. And the, the most common problem is, is something like this. You'll see that you're multiplying a number times its reciprocal. What do I mean by reciprocal? So basically, they turn it into a fraction and then flip it. So if you understand what it means to cancel out values or opposites, right? So to cancel out a three, we would have to multiply it by its reciprocal, one over three. And what we did here was cancel out the value using its opposite, right? We used a fraction instead of a whole number. And once we did that, we're going to cancel the value out and get it to one. So real quick to finish this property off when we're talking about the inverse property in addition our answer is normally always going to be equal to zero because we're canceling out the values however when we're talking about multiplication when we use opposites right whole number and a fraction we're going to cancel out the value so that our answer is one and that will only be for the multiplication part okay and my very last property we're going to talk about today is going to be the identity property, right? So this one, I chose to tell you guys it because everyone gets a little bit confused once they see this zero here. A lot of people think that it's the inverse property, but it is not. So when we are talking about the identity property, guys, what you have to understand is that the value does not change, okay? So when we look at the value of this equation, right? The, the value of the equation is negative 9y. If we added 0 to this, right, we would basically get negative 9y is equal to negative 9y, right? And when we look at the value, did anything change? Absolutely not, right? So this is a, a, a perfect example of the identity property of addition. Now, before I wrap it up, right, you know, before I wrap it up, if you guys found this review to be helpful, we're going to ask that you comment down for, below for us, <laughs> subscribe to our channel, and leave any comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. But before we wrap it up, let's say we go on to the multiplication aspect of the identity property. And understand, like we said, the identity property stays the same. So when we're talking about multiplication, we're going to have something like this. And typically with the multiplication, they're going to multiply the value by one. Because anything you multiply by one, it, it doesn't change the value. It stays the same. 
So in this problem here, x to the fourth times one is equal to x to the fourth. This is the identity property of multiplication because our values do not change. They stay the same. So thank you guys for joining me today. This is Professor Peters. Another video for you guys today. Hope that you like and enjoy. Subscribe to our channel and we'll catch you next time in our next video. Thank you guys for joining us today.